Hi, my name is Vivin Pollyat, and this is my project for CST594. For my project, I chose to implement in Java a neural network that recognizes handwritten digits. The licensing for this project is the Creative Commons Attribution License, which I'm highlighting here. The first thing I'd like to show is the project actually compiling successfully. You can see that here. It's compiling and it should return with a successful message. The next thing I'd like to show is the project running. What you're going to see here is the neural network actually learning to recognize uh, uh, handwritten images. You can see that it starts with a high error level and that's because the network is initialized with random weights. The term that you see displayed next to the error, which is called the average, is a moving average of the last 25 errors um, from basically the errors for the last 25 epochs. The reason I use that is to smooth out the oscillations I was getting towards the end of my training period. And although this substantially increases the training time, um, what I noticed was that it also made my neural network uh, more accurate, or at the very least more accurate than it would have been without the, the average. The next thing I'd like to do is to select a specific part of my code and then explain that. The area I've chosen is my implementation of the stochastic backpropagation algorithm. Uh, in general, the backpropagation algorithm uh, aims to backpropagate the error uh, between the expected output and the output from the neural network um, all the way through the neural network from the output layer um, through all the hidden layers. And our aim is to adjust the weights so that over time our neural network's output approaches the ideal output. The work is done by the backpropagator class which takes as uh, input to its constructor a neural network that's the network we're going to train along with the learning rate and a momentum. The train method actually takes care of training. Uh, it has as arguments a training data generator and an error threshold. The threshold is the limit until which we'll train the network and the training data generator uh, takes care of presenting input in a randomized fashion along with the corresponding and expected output. The backpropagate method is what implements the backpropagation algorithm and the algorithm is basically the stochastic backpropagation algorithm with a momentum term. So initially what we do is we loop over all the inputs that we have provided. So here we select an input and get the expected output. Then we present this input to our neural network and then we get the output of the neural network. And now we start the backpropagation. So we start with the output layer and then we look at each neuron in the output layer. So our aim over here is to calculate the error on each of the neurons. So if the layer is an output layer, the neuron error, the neuron error is just the derivative of the activation function multiplied by the difference between the output of that neuron and the expected output. Now normally, uh, when you get the output of a neuron, you simply pass it through an activation function, which in our case, over here, happens to be the sigmoid activation function. Now when you get the derivative, all you're doing is passing that weighted sum through the derivative of the activation function. Once you've calculated the error, we simply set that error on the neuron. Now if the layer is not an output layer, uh, things get a little more complicated because you have to look at the errors from the preceding layers or uh, the successive layers, sorry. So first we set the neuron error to the value of the derivative. And then we have to start calculating a sum of the errors. Now when you look at our current neuron, it has synapses that go from it to all the neurons in successive layer. So if you look, assuming there are m neurons in the successive layers, we have m synapses between our current neuron and all the neurons in the successive layer. So what we're trying to do is adjust the weights on these synapses. So we get our list of downstream neurons and we have to do this for every synapse. And so to do that we have to look at every downstream neuron. Now you look at the downstream neuron and then you get at all its synapses. And then we make sure that the synapse we're looking at is the one that comes from our current neuron. If it is, we calculate the sum which is the current weight of the synapse multiplied by the error on this on this downstream neuron. 
and once we add this up, we multiply it with the neuron error, which we initially set to, set to the derivative. After that, we set the error on this neuron. The next step is actually performing the backpropagation, um, and this is where we adjust the weights. So once again, we start with the output layer, and then we look at each neuron in the output layer, and then we look at each, each synapse on that neuron or that is each input on that neuron. We calculate the delta, which is the change that we want to uh, make in the weight. And that delta is calculated by the learning rate multiplied by the neuron error, multiplied by the value of the input that is going into this neuron. Now let's forget about the momentum term for a bit. So we're, we maintain this map of a neuron delta, so we are putting an entry of the synapse along with its delta into the map. And then we adjust the weight, which is the current weight minus the delta. Now let's look at the momentum term. The first time we come into this loop, or look at this specific synapse, it will not have an entry. So which means this will be null, which means we'll never get inside this if statement. The second time we come around, it does have an entry, which means we have uh, the value of the last delta that we calculated. So we get that value out of the map, and now the new delta is the delta we calculated here plus the momentum times the previous delta. We then update that value in the map and then adjust the weight again. Once you have adjusted all the weights, we get the output of the neural network after we adjusted the weights, and then we calculate the error. The error is simply a mean squared error which is calculated over here. We then add up all the errors and then return that value back to our train method. This train method maintains a moving average of the last 25 errors. And I calculate the error and then I check it against the error threshold. And once the, error, once the average is below the error threshold, then we exit out of the loop, which means that our neural network has been successfully trained. What I'd like to go over next is a demo of the project itself and for that I have a website that's hosted on Google's App Engine over here. What you can do here is actually write digits and check it against uh, a previously trained neural network. While doing this I noticed a few shortcomings and uh, the main thing is with, with the neural network's accuracy as far as uh, detecting the digit 7. Um, the original training data comes from MNIST's database of handwritten digits, and these were originally written by census takers. And the sevens in these case have a horizontal stroke that points down, whereas a normal seven has a vertical horizontal stroke. And this is probably because the census takers are writing it very quickly. So, as and therefore because of this, the neural network is predisposed towards uh, detect successfully recognizing those kinds of sevens. So for example, recognizes this as a 7. If we use a regular 7, it seems to recognize it as a 2. And even with a lower score, which shows that it doesn't successfully recognize the value, it sometimes has issues with recognizing the digit 9 but in this case it seems to have recognized it successfully. We can test some other digits. Let's try an 8. A 6. Four. A three. Two. 
like one. And a zero. If you're interested in the source for this website, you can view it here on GitHub at this URL. And the source for my framework that I created to train the neural network is available at, the, at this URL on GitHub. Now I'd like to go over what I learned as far as neural networks are concerned. Initially I started with little or no experience with neural networks, but at the end of this project I believe I have a decent understanding of how they work and how backpropagation and the various enhancements to backpropagation like Silva and Almeida's algorithm and simulated annealing work. I also learned that part of the challenge when dealing with neural ne networks is figuring out an adequate representation for input data. And um, when you're faced with some problems, uh, they don't actually lend themselves to being adequately represented as input to a neural network. So that's um, actually an ongoing area of uh, research to figure out if uh, a problem can be adequately represented for a neural network. Um, Neural networks also don't lend themselves to a traditional form of debugging. Uh, they're too much of a black box. And so simply, for example, looking at a node uh, while debugging and looking at its weight doesn't really help you figure out why your neural network isn't uh, performing the way you want it to. So the training outcome can also be rather non-deterministic, and they depend a lot on the initial parameters, especially when using gradient descent and so in, in a sense they're rather opaque and they're difficult to troubleshoot when they don't really work. And so there's not too much confidence on your part um, that they that may not generalize really well to the data because of a certain data that, it, that wasn't included in your training set. Uh, another problem uh, I noticed was that figuring out the ideal number of, of hidden layers and neurons is not exact. Uh, it's mostly done via experimentation, uh, so you have to see how it performs to know if you've selected a good number of hidden layers and neurons. There are some guidelines, um, but still uh, you're encouraged to experiment and figure out. Also, neural networks aren't really a silver bullet. They're suited to specific kinds of problems, um, mainly dealing with classification, so they ne may not be applicable to every problem. You're always better off uh, looking to see if there's a strong theoretical underpinning for your problem, and then to see if there's are, there are other methods of solving it than, than just throwing a general purpose neural network at your problem and hoping uh, that, it solves prop that it solves your solution, for your solution. They're also not very probabilistic. Uh, unlike uh, statistical counterparts or you know statistical or Bayesian counterparts uh, in machine learning, uh, neural networks aren't very probabilistic. So it's always useful to see how confident your classifier is about its answers. So it because it'll help you better manage uh, the cost of making your errors. And a neural network just gives you a continuous output, uh, which is a score, but it's hard to translate that into a probability. Also, uh, neural networks are never a substitute for actually understanding your problem. Uh, it's better to look at your problem, dissect it, analyze it, and figure out if there is uh, a concrete solution that you can use for it than just simply throwing a general purpose neural network at it and hoping for the best. Um, so in conclusion, uh, neural, ne neural networks are a very interesting field of study, and I'm glad I got the opportunity to work with them because it's something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while.